theatre, film and television work here, England, America, elsewhere. Um, because they have put their house in order. They've, they've managed to negotiate this passion and this conviction. Uh, they've got the craft and now they're putting it into, into action. Which is the third thing I want to talk to you about. Is, is once, you've, once you're ready to go, um, you, 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 you've got to figure out how do you put yourself there? How do you get yourself there? Now, there, there, there's a fairly straightforward, um, you, you know, you're, 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 you have a view of the world that you're looking at. You have a view of American television, or you have a view of Irish theatre, or you have a view of the world. You, you, there's, there's absolutely no point or purpose in you deciding that I'm going to be an actor for it all. I'm just going to be an actor, you know. Watch me, Mom. I'm going to be a star. <laughs> You've got to figure out what part of that cake you're going for. There's no point or purpose in saying I'm going to be absolutely everything for, for everything, for everybody. Because you mightn't be 20 anymore. Or, you know, you, you mightn't be, you mightn't be, you mightn't be. You've got to be quite distinctive. If you want to work in alternative theatre in this city, then you've got to get the Irish Theatre Handbook and you've got to sift through it and you've got to map your path. Because if you don't map your path, there's a terrible danger that you won't be able to find your journey. And if you don't find your journey, there's a terrible danger that you're going to find yourself frustrated, stuck, getting anxious and angry. There's no actor I know, no actor I know, that doesn't have to earn a crust by doing other stuff. None. N nobody. E even, um, even the big boys and girls, you know, they will do a load of extra stuff to make sure that they are able to do what they need to, to do. It's an extraordinary noble profession, as is working in a restaurant. You know, the scary thing about the west coast of America is, you know, you order a cup of coffee, you know, the, pick of the, the, the amount of actors who are working in, in those industries is spectacular, spectacular. And um, we might talk about Los Angeles in a, in, a, in a minute because it's a pretty lonely, pretty lonely, bleak place unless you're able to stack all your ducks up in a very specific, uh, in a very specific way. So, so, if you need to get your CV ready and your photograph ready, um, it's worth investing time, effort, energy and money, money, money in getting the right picture. You know, the picture that you take of you, am I spitting on you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the umbrella, yeah. Um, the, the purpose of that photograph, that 10 by 8 photograph, is to catch your soul. It's not just to catch your head, or your hair, or your... It's to catch the essence of you. And if it doesn't catch the essence of you, don't accept the photograph. The photographer's job, and good God they're expensive enough, the photographer's job is to take a picture of you, is to take a photograph of you, and to cap capture, catch, a moment in time that, that, they, that Maureen Hughes, in her casting director's office, is able to look at and go, wow, there's something about her that just comes through that photograph. And I want to talk to her again. And she will. And she'll follow it up and she'll ring you and whatever, whatever. So, so uh, uh, please regard a photograph as being something other than just, oh, I don't look great in that. If you don't look great in it, it's the wrong photograph. S photographer's job is to catch the essence of you, which is why you have a conversation, which is why you have a talk, which is why you need to lighten up in those photographs. Just be yourself, alive, because if you're not alive, there's a terrible danger that what will be captured is this grim misery, which sort of is just beneath the surface sometimes. So you've got to capture that. In terms of the resume, what you put on there, put it all down, but be able to stand over it. Don't write down, I mean, write it all down. If you haven't done a load of stuff, that's not the end of the world. That's being quite honest. You know, if you are ready and the fire is right and you're ready to step out of drama school or you're ready to step from wherever you are into the industry, then you've got to make sure that, that what's on there stacks up. Because you may be certain, somebody might say, well, oh, 19, oh, wow, 2006, you were, you were with Paul Mercier and that, I was in that show. I don't recognize you. Oh, yeah, and you found out. And then it's, the whole thing just falls asunder. You know, it's terrible. Um, so you've got a resume and you've got this photograph that, that, that catches you. The Irish Theatre Handbook is, is, a, is like a kind of a Bible because it, it lists everybody and everywhere. If you don't have the Irish Theatre Handbook, you've got to get it. If it's out of print, you've got to steal one. You've got to get a hold of one from somewhere because it outlines. The other thing you need to do is you need to get the blank sheet of paper book, which is the book which has you 
uh, you know, first page says, you know, I'm an actor, and then the second, underneath that is, where do I want to act? And you, you, you put down your goals, and you literally put down where you want to go. If you want to work with Druid, because Druid in Galway is the company that lights your fire, that floats your boat, that makes you want to make the work you want to make, then you've got to get hold of Gary Hines. How do you get hold of Gary Hines? You find a way to get hold of Gary Hines. Oh, but Gary Hines is Gary... Gary Hines is a human being who's perfectly capable of having a conversation with you if you put yourself in her way. You don't have to be rude, you don't have to be aggressive, you don't have to be unpleasant. Gary Hines likes nothing more than meeting a pleasant person. Fiat McAneel, the same. Michael Colgan, similar. <laughs> Please understand that if you are the talented person who's got the fire in their belly and has the talent, please understand that you are the people who make their jobs happen. If they don't have talent, then there's a huge, huge problem. They're not going to do the plays themselves. They've got to find new talent, interesting talent, challenging talent, vibrant talent. They've got to find it. And that's why the industry is in the very lively, forget about the recession, it's in a very, very lively place at the moment where if people are not getting work in the Abbey, they're making work. If people are not making work, they're thinking about work that they want to make. That they're actually mapping out this journey that I'm, that I'm talking about. So make no mistake about it. That, 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 well, too often I see too many people who are subservient to the craft. And what I mean by that is it's like, oh, you know, I'm an actor. I'm kind of bent over. I'm kind of apologetic for living. As opposed to standing with a bit of backbone, a bit of spine, and saying, I'm here, I'm ready, I know why I'm here, and I have something that I want to offer. And, and uh, you know, don't worry about getting into drama school. Worry about the audition as I've outlined it, that it's got the same level of preparedness, the same level of um, determination and preparation behind it. O otherwise, you're going to find yourself, otherwise you're going to find yourselves um, well, you know, I'll say it again, fourth, tenth time, possibly in the mediocre camp, possibly in the average uh, d department. So let's just say you've decided that you want to work in educational theatre. Then you've got to figure out who's who in that field and you've got to get to them, you've got to write to them. Uh, there's nothing people like more than a decently written, crafted letter which says, I'd like to meet you because I am interested in your work. Uh, and you've got to be able to explain that. Often, sorry, there's no theatre company in the country that is not open to talking and open to meeting and open to the Abbey do it, uh, the Gate do it less, but you can still find a way in which the show that you make and you put on in Smock Alley or that you put on in the queue or you put on in the focus, you can make sure that that play is marketed, advertised, promoted in such a way that the carrot is out there, that Maureen Hughes Gillian Reynolds, they've got to go to see it, these cast, because they've heard about it. Because you've done some sort of a, uh, you've done some sort of a, um, a, a, a Facebook campaign that's just bubbled under and caught people's imagination. You've tweeted and caught people's imagination. You've done an email campaign that has caught people's uh, imagination. Um, you know, you, 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 well, you, you can't sit there and hope that they're going to come and see your play. You've got to sit there and plan your campaign. And the, the result of the campaign, the coup de grace, is when Maureen, Maureen Hughes walks in there and she sees your, your play. And she says, I liked that play and I want your information. And you give me the information and I put it on file. You're the woman who was in the play that you invited me to, I went to. And then the dots start adding up. Sometimes they don't. Um, more often than not, uh,